fantastic testimony. Um, Mr. Jaffer, you, you've talked a lot about um, some of the things, some of our problems that we have with uh, going back and forth with China. How do you, how do you see us uh, stopping this? I mean, when it comes to our courts, normally to be able to go to court, you have to have standing, do you not? And therefore, how do they how do they have standing? I mean, is that a way we can approach this by saying, "Hey, anybody who from China does not have standing in our courts, therefore we're going to dismiss any lawsuits"? I mean, is that practical? Or tell me how we can put some put some barriers here for these guys? Yeah, I mean, it's one approach to look at the standing question. Um, their claim would be they've been injured in the U.S. by people writing and, and speaking out here. But what we can do is we can raise the bar for them. We can uh, make it harder for them to bring these suits. Oftentimes, in cases like fraud, we require heightened pleading standards. We can require them to meet heightened pleading standards if they're a foreign entity or a foreign controlled entity like all these Chinese companies are. They have these CCP cells, as, as, uh, as the ranking member pointed out. So we can put bars to them, make it harder for them to sue in our courts, not make it an easy walk in, treat them like we treat an American company, which is crazy. They're not American companies. Um, and we can also incentivize our own lawyers to defend our own people and say, look, if you win against these Chinese companies, you get treble damages, you get attorney's fees. Uh, we can reward these researchers for the work they're doing. There's a lot of tools we have at our disposal to go uh, to, to help defend against these type of lawsuits. But we need to make some changes to our laws as a result to make that happen. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Puglisi, thank you so much for being here today. It's, uh, it's a very interesting to see you here, and we appreciate the, uh, the, the courage it takes to be here. Um, you know, just for the record, because our record is permanent, and they're trying to take yours and wipe it out, what exactly did you do with your research so we can get it on record to make sure that there is a record there that they cannot dispose of? Thank you very much. Um, it is it's an honor to be here today. Um, what our research did was, um, it was based on, we, we look very closely, my research looks very closely at China's S&T development and um, tech acquisition strategy and how that relates to US-China competition. Um, and in looking at these emerging technologies, specifically biotechnology, it became very clear um, the blueprint that we were seeing is very similar you know, to what China has used in the past for its telecommunications um, development. And so we started to just really uh, dig into policies, to programs, uh, to public disclosures of um, financial documents, to really start to, to you know, go in with an open mind and say, okay, what, what do we have here? What are we dealing with here? Um, and you know, it became very clear that this was a very, very different um, entity, just the depth and breadth um, and in my written testimony, as well as, as the paper that I can supply to the uh, committee, uh, we really outline um, you know, some of those ties. And it really comes back, I think, to, to one of the statements that I make is that you know, these, just because they say they're a company or a university or uh, you know, even a court, uh, doesn't mean they function in the same way. Um, and so uh, we just really wanted to um, you know, highlight uh, the research that's, that's going on as well. Free speech is a wonderful thing, isn't it? It is a very wonderful thing. We're going to fight to protect it. Uh, Ms. Goldenziel, um, one of the things I want to ask you about here is, um, you know, you, you, you're you very involved with regards to the uh, legal stuff. You talk about trifecta of warfare, legal, public opinion, and media. Um, you know, one of the ways, to me, you know, Mr. Barr and I, we sit on the Financial Services Committee, and one of the things that we always look for here on this committee is how we can curtail the investment of money into China, either through the companies that they set up or direct investment with our companies setting up their own companies over there. How do you, how do you suggest we curtail that so that we can not help them be bigger and better and help their economy grow um, you know, you talked about the, the warfare and you listed the, the media and public opinion. How do we get the message out that it's not smart, it's not good business, it's not in our best interest to invest in China and help them grow their economy? Thank you, Congressman, for that question. I think there are two ways. First of all, the work of Sophia, the CFIUS um, committee has been excellent in this regard and Congress has created new legislation 
relatively recently, and they've promulgated rules relative, new rules relatively recently on both inbound and outbound investment into the U.S. And we need to keep monitoring this, refining this to make sure those laws are working, first of all. And uh, secondly, to ensure they are protecting the, the right things. And thirdly, to make sure they are not stifling innovation too much into our economy. It is a difficult balance to curtail investment while not stifling innovation and the free market economy in the United States. I've been uh, involved in a lot of those conversations as well. And then secondly, I think the committee can play a great role in education. Uh, education about what is going on with uh, PRC involvement in U.S. courts. We have taken to calling it recently in, in the military, this is a, a new term for me, but uh, the U.S. and some of its allies and partners are starting to use the term ICAD, illegal, coercive, aggressive, and deceptive behavior. And I think this term encompasses all of the actions that we are talking about today that the PRC is taking in U.S. courts and in the U.S. legal system. And we can raise awareness of all of these behaviors that can empower litigants to protect their own rights, investors to make better decisions, and the courts to incorporate real evidence of PRC legal warfare behavior when making their judicial decisions. Very good. My time's expired. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Representative Castor. 